I wanted to share some of the Tesla APIs that you can use to download data uh, and create charts um, and analyze the data for uh, Solar and Powerwall. <clears throat> this uses the same APIs um, that's documented, the unofficial APIs that are documented for, for the vehicles as well. So some decent documentation out there, although there's a lot less than the vehicles. And so the first one I'll share with you is uh, the main methods um, to access the data. Um, there's actually quite a few of them. I only used a, f a couple of them. Um, and uh, use the same access token that you use to get to the <clears throat> get to the cars. And um, they have two identifiers. One's a site ID and one's a batter ID, which um, I think you can find um, on the on the actual stickers inside the devices, like the gateway. And so um, the first one um, that I generally use uh, is the uh, is the get status. So this this actually gives you some small amount of information um, about <clears throat> about your setup, um, if it's connected to the grid, um, battery status percentage, that sort of thing. The live status actually gives you um, what shows up on your mobile app, which tells you sort of how much draw there is from um, the solar, from the grid, from your home, for the power wall. So this gives you um, point in time data about that. And then <clears throat> the get side info gives you like a detailed breakdown, um, not so much about the energy distribution that's happening currently, but like your system config, what mode are you, what operational mode are you in? Are you a time and time of use plan? What the settings for peak and off peak are? Um, so there's a lot of information around that. Um, this is more information. I, I generally don't <clears throat> use this method. Um, and then this is the other one <clears throat> that I use quite a bit, um, actually daily. The site history, this gives you like a summary level information about your production during the day, um, about what went to the grid, from the grid, battery, and I'll show you that how this gets, I use this to put this into a spreadsheet. Um, I'll show you sort of how that, how that could be um, put in charts. And this data maps to part of the app, uh, what shows up on the app. Um, and then this part called get battery power history, this gives you like a, a very long list of um, items in a JSON object that um, is like five five minute increments. This is used to build this thing called the enter usage chart that you can see in the app. It looks like a you know looks like an oval, which is the solar production, and it gives you the detail. And this goes back. <clears throat> you can go back. I don't know how many days you can go back, but you can um, go back and download the data actually as well. But this gives you. Um, uh, a direct feed from that versus when you do it from the app, download my app that gives you a, like a CSV file of some sort. So I use this to put into um, an InfluxDB, which is like a like a specialized database for IoT devices, um, timestamp. So um, creates a lot of charts from that. And I'll show you that as well. Um, so yeah, so that's that's generally um, the main methods I use out of the test API. There's other stuff here that you can get like when the system was down you know, when the battery kicked in, I haven't tried it because I haven't had a system outage yet or a grid outage. Um, <clears throat> there's also methods to get, like if you look in the app, it tells you what percent you're self-powered. So there's like other methods that tell you sort of which, when you're self-powered during on-peak, off-peak, whatever, and it calculates um, everything that's in the app. So you can get pretty much everything from there, from the APIs, in, from these using these APIs. And then there's some other modes here, which I haven't, you, I've tested them, but I don't use them. You could actually send commands to change like the operating mode, like if you wanna be in self-consumption, self-powered, um, backup <clears throat> only mode. So all these are in the app, you can set in the app, but in case you wanna manipulate them on some kind of algorithm, your own algorithm or timer, um, you can do that. So I was just playing around with it, but um, these do work. The trickiest one is the, is the advanced mode. There's two modes, like one says cost basis or cost savings, one says balanced. And the trick to setting that one is to use this um, <clears throat> time of use setting. Um, and you have to pass in this thing called the strategy, which is um, you know either balanced or the cost saving one. Um, but I, what I also learned is if you don't pass in your schedule, your time of use schedule, when you do, it'll erase whatever you had in that. So it's really kind of annoying. So I, I hard coded it. This is what it is for me, which is PG&E. 
So anyway, so these are so these are some of the basic methods. Um, and then what I do is then I write that information using another method that accesses um, <clears throat> and then formulates the objects that will prep the data packet to be written into a spreadsheet or um, in FlexDB. And um, you know this one is the summary level one I told you about. So this is the site status. It gives you like a summary for the day and um, I'll have I'll have links to this in GitHub so you can look through the data. Um, it gives it to you. It, I don't know. I don't quite fully understand, but it gives it to you in like two day chunks. So like when you when you call the API, it gives you like the day you ask, and then like minus one day or something like that. So I don't know why it does that, but it does that. And so what I have to do is I have to pass in a date through the function on the top, um, which is. Uh, I'll explain how that works too, but I pass in a date and then I, I have to strip out that date and look to see if it matches the year, month, and day so I can get all the data for, you know, that particular day um, because like I said, there's there's more than one day in there for some reason. And then I can pull out, you know, all these things. I'll show it to you in the spreadsheet. Um, and so this is what it looks like. Um, so I pull some of it to get the battery capacity. So this is the max capacity. So I could use this to measure how much degradation there is, what percent it's charged um, at that time. And then this, all this stuff on here, here that says th these um, <clears throat> kind of long names, these are the actual field values. And I kind of color coded them and grouped them by kind of a logical grouping. And then I wrote like a human readable format down here because some of these are difficult to understand. So is it to home or from home? Well, it's always to home. Um, and then where did it come from? It came from power wall, it came from solar, it came from grid, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, so I have them grouped in here and I, I mapped the, the, the names into, um, into like a human or a friendly format. I don't know what service the grid service is. I see that a lot. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't have any values for it. So I don't know what a grid service is and I don't have a generator. So, um, I think if you did, you can have values in here. And what I did was then you can, um, I created a new section called mobile app stats. So if you actually roll into your um, into your uh, PowerFlow and click the little stats button, you'll get a little page that looks like this. And it tells you for, you know, you can put whatever day you want and then you can do a week or month or year kind of, kind of thing. And it gives you like this roll up that says, here's how much your home use, how much solar you produce from power, you know, so you could see this here. And essentially <clears throat> that's coming from these stats. So if you do the math, on some of these things, these numbers will match exactly what's in the app. So that's how you can recreate. And then you can chart it. That's what I do. I chart it over time to see, hey, seasonally, how much solar am I generating? <clears throat> how much am I putting to the grid? So on and so forth. So it's essentially, it's this information charted over time, which, you know, I think can be useful. And then here I'm tracking the power wall capacity, which, you know, over time I suspect it may degrade a little bit. Um, just wanna be aware of that. And then there's some information I wanted to track for for home usage. So that's um, that's on the the summary side, which um, like I said, this this part. Now, on the detailed side, which is the fiber increment, when you scroll up on that same page in the app, you get this sort of picture. And if you kind of drag your cursor along, you'll get you know what the value is for um, any one of these four at any given time. And so that's what this. Um, second method is which I called the right detail method and and um, this detail method is the one that calls this method that gives you the five uh, five minute increments so you can um, in the same way as the other one for some reason it gives it to you even though you ask for a specific date it gives you that date plus another day so I have to match up the month day year to make sure <clears throat> excuse me I grab the correct data for that day that I want and what I do is I run it on a timer just after midnight on a cron job that asks for the previous day. So it loads it up in batch. Um, I suppose you could do it. I'll show you. Actually, I do a real-time version of this too, but you can load it, you know, not in batch, but I just choose to load it in batch um, for the previous day. So it's the date is, is minus one. And so it'll pull all this information. And these are, again, all the fields that you saw on the spreadsheet. Um, uh, but this version is, uh, you know, like I said, this detail, um, I actually write to a, to a influx database. So um, I'll show you that database as well. So this, this, this information recreates this graph 
Um, and I did it in a spreadsheet initially, but um, there's a lot of data. So I put it into this InfluxDB and there's a Grafana um, visualization, which I'll show you. So it's really the four things that you see on this app, um, the home usage, uh, what they call load power, solar power, battery power, and grid power. So those are the four. We actually, this took me a long time to figure out. It actually only gives you uh, these three. And what I, it took me a, like a few days to figure this out. Um, the fourth one, the home usage, is actually the sum of these three things. So I, for the longest time, I couldn't find where this, this d data was, but it turns out um, they just calculated from the sum of the grid power the battery power and the solar power so that the the net of those things tells you how much your home is drawing which it makes sense i just it just wasn't apparent and then um i get you know a database client for the influx db and then um, i write it to that that database and then so <clears throat> you know what it what it gives me is it loads this um this 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 data um for the previous day all you know however many there's probably a hundred something values in there and it puts it into um, this uh, influx database, which you can put a, what's called a Grafana. It's the, these are all free. Grafana is a visualization um, kind of a tool, and you can build charts from that. And and this looks exactly. I even use the same colors, right? It use, looks exactly like you know the app one. You know, I can do a per day or you know whatever. I pick. A, I can pick a particular date if I want, right? So this gives you the last seven days. And then you can do an integration over the over the curve, and it'll give you like what the total production. It's slightly off from what's in the app, so I think if you want a more accurate version, you have to use that you know spreadsheet thing I showed you. But this this reflects um, you know same five minute increments um, of the previous day's activity, so you can use it for analysis. So it's pretty cool, and you can see I can I faintly put in I don't know if it's visible, but I faintly put in like the my off peak and peak time periods. You can set time regions in Grafana and, and uh, see sort of where you're using the uh, electricity relative to your, your plan. Um, and then I thought about, okay, how do, how do I do a version that could be sort of uh, real time? Um, so then I set up like a, another similar um, method, which does it live. And it calls in, because the, the previous one, it gives you all the data for the previous day. This gives it to me at a point in time. So the live status function gives it a point in time. So I, essentially in the same way I pull this data or some other you know information data I want to see live and it you know puts a timestamp it pulls the data out and then um, it'll write it to a Grafana database and then you can see here um, this writes every five minutes and so um, this I checked today this matches pretty much exactly what's in the app right so it'll tell you um, the same thing that the app will tell you so um, I can put this on a like a tablet or some some other device and mount it somewhere in the house so it'll show this real time without having me to flip to the app all the time. And this is another interesting one I picked just to show my you know power wall state of charge over time. So it'll just give me that as well. Um, so I thought these were really interesting projects to do with the Tesla API and using solar information and power information to either adjust my my habits um, or maybe change the way I you know, make the system behave. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And you can, like I said, through either a spreadsheet or through a database like in a Grafana visualization tool, you can create um, a lot of neat charts. Um, I've seen some out there that are even more uh, fascinating. And so, um, uh, you know, you can play around these and create as many as you want with the data. It gives you a lot of data. And you can either recreate what was already in the app or you can create your own, um, which is quite nice. So um, if this is helpful, um, feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, and if you have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment. I'd be happy to try to help you with your project. Thanks.